to a backtracking to the future and we open up with the gang at the max with Screech with Rollout Bed Day. <laughs> they are all there because Kelly has an emergency. Oh my god, move over Kevin Bacon because Kelly is having a baby. Friends got snowed in at the ski lodge. I gotta babysit Billy till they come home. Who like most on the program are inserted to fulfill a purpose and then tossed and lost in the storylines of time. Right! The premise of this episode is that Kelly has a big weight on her shoulders. For Kelly's parents were accidentally snowed in in one of those makeshift lodges in one of Los Angeles' frigid mountainous regions featuring blizzards, polar bears, polar ice caps, and avalanches. How's he gonna learn all those cheers when he can't even talk yet? <laughs> so, as a result, she has to babysit Billy until her parents get back because after all, heaven forbid, Kelly's parents prepare to operate on an emergency budget so their baby bro can get proper daycare so as to ward off Child Protective Services. Come on, ask me something easy like making sure he grows up in a nuclear-free environment. Hey, having your young play hooky to babysit is a great way to ensure your daughter never leaves the bird's nest. Woo. Zach, I can't take I'm care of. Done. Billy, I've got a test first period. Go home and get duded up. Suddenly, Lisa and Jesse forget their cheerleaders and refuse to get their pictures taken. Take care of you, but the stress isn't paid for yet. However, the gang appears at Slater's beck and call so they can leave the baby with the second most incompetent womanizing bozo of the bunch. Also, they can all tend to their own first world problems. It's just you, me, and a baby, huh? <laughs> it's just you, Preppy. Uh -uh. Come on, I've got a geometry no. quiz to get to. Uh-uh. When it comes to a crisis where it's supposed to be friends forever, it's all about looking up for number one. Uh, well. So we forks Billy over to Zach, and what does Zach do? Looks like I'm a single parent, huh? Smuggles the baby in a gym bag. Hey Zach, do you have the baby in the bag? Shh, quiet. He only has this live infant for 30 seconds, and already he's accumulating votes for the father of the year as one neglectful son of a bitch. Don't want anybody to know he's in here. Too late, dipstick, you already told me. <laughs> what is it with smuggling babies at Bayside? Is there some kind of rule against child trafficking? What? I can't hear you. What are you gonna do with the baby? <laughs> when the bell rings, we find Zach in French class with Madame Oof Everyone ready? <laughs> the nameless madam who gives the most horrific French accents ever. You make such a good example. Oui, oui. Oh! <laughs> what follows after is a minute and a half featuring some of the most dread worst gags yet to make their entrance into the show until now. The R in English is the R en français. <laughs> it features Billy crying at most random intervals. Said that too. Hasn't the director seen the baby cry? Becky, was that you who made the R so perfectement? You cannot walk a mile in this world without hearing the cries of soiled pants. Oh, everyone do and say just like that. <laughs> so nameless madame, being the off-put idiot that most secondary characters can't distinguish between a baby and Zach Morris lip-syncing. Who made the R so perfectement? Nameless madame encourages all the French extras to imitate baby crying. Oh, the French sound. <laughs> That's it for a full minute and a half. <laughs> when Lisa walks and whispers in Zach's ear, causing Zach to panic as to the whereabouts of Kelly. Kelly did what? Kelly did what? 
Because, hey, at Bayside, your hall pass is whatever moves the plot along. Uh, emergency, I, I gotta go. Uh, emergency, I gotta go. Back in the hallway, things only go downhill as Kelly breaks her arm after getting her picture taken, yet you still flaunt that baby in broad daylight. <laughs> well, in keeping up in this episode of The Stupids, not one adult figure or extras blink an eye at Zack because I guess Kapowski youth have free reign to have those speak no evil, hear no evil, hail baby. We feel the same way, kid. Someone is paying Kelly in Pampers. Go team! Jesse and Lisa arrive with a plan to just leave the baby with a school nurse or an authoritarian figure like Mr. Building. And go now. Because I'm guessing their schedules are open and contributing to child abduction is community service to him. <laughs> Zach brushes that idea off and insists he be the king idiot to decide the baby's fate in his day's quest against the evils of malnutrition. I don't know, he just does that a lot. But, well, you know, maybe he's hungry or something. The person behind the yearbook shoots is Max, who was hired without Belding's knowledge. Nice of you to volunteer, Max. Who said anything about volunteering? And for the first time is paid, also without Belding's knowledge. You guys are paying me a bundle. <laughs> Smile. That may be out of context with the script, because he mentioned photography was just his hobby. Oh, wait a minute, Max, wait a minute. But hey, the guy has to eat for Bayside buying him out and continuing to run up a restaurant tab that still is a curing interest. On the payroll, I want a portrait for Mrs. B. Now Max has cut. Say medium rare. Medium rare. <laughs> yeah, creepy. Even before traumatizing is Billy has witnessed his first nude scene watching Zack and Slater change at the same time. Yeah, I know. Jeez, Baby Day Out is turning out to be Planet of the Apes. Yeah, I know. The law of laissez-faire storyline jungle continues with the question, who is going to be the next babysitter? You know what, I'll watch him for you when I get back from my wrestling picture. Oh, thanks. Slater agrees to look after the child with only one condition. After the photo shoot, of course. No sweat. Health course and pediatric care would have done great for Billy's short but brief child rearing minutes of his life. A ding dong in my gym bag. <laughs> Babies don't eat ding-dongs, ding-dong. Aw, oh, that poor thing. For Slater is about to commit homicide by trying to stuff parts of a ding-dong down his throat. No sweat. Formulas, people. Formulas. Maybe he's thirsty. Can of root beer, too. As if you had breasts, Slater. The thing that they do, Master, is to take out the trash by changing his diaper, which is more of a better job than Uncle Jesse and Uncle Joey did on Full House. Then we get our umbrellas, because we don't want to be given a baby shower. <laughs> that wasn't the problem. What, are you looking at something, Mancuso? <laughs> the problem comes, well, when one of them decides who wants to cover Billy's, you know. I know it. Hey, I'll do it. You don't know anything. No, he's my responsibility. Nether regions. Good one, Slater! That was his last diaper! When Slater leaves for a second, I thought Zack was about to commit child abandonment by sticking him in a locker and letting Freddy Krueger the janitor have him as his next of kin afterwards. We're bonding. You figure it out. <laughs> then we get a dream sequence of what I like to call the seed of Zack, the next scheming generation through various stages through elementary, the good morning Miss Bliss years, and almost about to be on the college years. Even for college, you play the field, huh? <laughs> Gosh, they grow up fast. In all three stages, his son grows up to outsmart his father's hellspawn antics, thus the cycle into pure evil is complete. 
Yeah, Dad. Gotta get a head start in partying. That's right. Hold it. Let me have the credit card. Ah, oh, Dad. <laughs> That's my boy. I can tell you've been laughing half-assed through this whole sequence, haven't you? But Zach decided to pawn Billy off to women with some form of moral responsibility, so he gives them to Jesse and Lisa. But we've got home ec this period. Oh, perfect. Hey, if he gets hungry, just make his formula. Come on. <laughs> Look at where we are now. This young soul is saved in the company of women in home economics class during baby care week. Hail baby! Infant care is a big part of your grade this term. <laughs> Mrs. Thatcher, the home economics teacher, can tell a crying baby from a synthetic one. Whoa! My, they make these dolls lifelike, don't they? And for some reason, Screech drops in and announced to pick up Billy. <laughs> Great. For a minute, I thought he would pick up Billy when he was 18 and Screech was in his college years. Move it to the left! Move it to the right! Further to the right! Not there! Yes, there! You got it! How can this man not tell flesh from plastic? I find fun! Probably already got put up for adoption. Praise the Lord. It's like I missed the little guy too. Since we needed a family bonding moment, Kelly returns to also search for Billy, where they go into ludicrous speed, going in and out of lockers. <laughs> go Rescue Rangers. You might need more from Rescue Rangers. That's not until the intercom reveals some crying. Gookie gookie. <laughs> you hear that, Belly? Billy's got a surprise for you. It's poop. You say detention? <laughs> the semi-competent one he was, and always will be, for one moment of time, attains foster parent status as the gang try to convince them that they didn't find the abandoned baby by the old orphanage. Didn't know where Billy was? Um, of course we knew. Oh, oh yep. golly, yes. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> His memory loss kicks in, and he agreed to look after Billy, thus avoiding Zach and Kelly's first midlife crisis. Uh, worried that Mr. Building wasn't getting any work done. Right. Hey, with all the work he does, hey, he still takes time to watch your little baby brother. None of us would have to miss our yearbook pictures. Huh? So Max, also known as Mr. Skin, drops on by to take a picture of the rest of the cast with the baby so that Bayside can forever document the day Babies were allowed to cross into school grounds, thwarted child protection services, and found a reliable babysitter who can't even babysit his own damn school. That's true. The episode ends with Billy the baby adding in his very first words. <laughs> Take your most obvious guess. <laughs> Wait a minute, what did he say? Snack? That's my boy. We've bonded. 